Yes, it's Peter here, aka Peter Freako Turd, baby. Bring you guys an episode of the Movie Review Show. The good movies are always reviewed. Okay, back into our movie review. All right, now on today's episode, we're stepping back into the Judd Apatow territory of comedies. He didn't direct this one, also, but he was a producer on it. And this is a film that I had my eye on for quite a while because at first, when I saw it, I just saw this trailer and thought it didn't really look that good. I thought it was just going to be some smultzy comedy that I wasn't going to be interested in, seeing as how those aren't my type of films, but. I figured, you know what, my mom wants to see this film, and seeing Judd Apatow involved in the trailer gave me some laughs, I figured why not take a night out with her and give it a watch. And what film is that, you may be asking? That film, boys and girls, is none other than Forgetting Sarah Marshall. So, let's take a trip to Hawaii and see if we can forget about our loved ones in this feature. Now, Forgetting Sarah Marshall, this is a film made in 2008, and it's directed by a guy named Nicholas Stoller, who's had his hand in the past with a few of Judd Apatow's things, and we'll get into that in a little bit. And for those who don't know, this is actually a movie written by the maid lead himself, Jason Segel. I shit you not, Jason Segel wrote this film. And where did this idea come about with him? Well, it came about after he was going through a breakup he had with his girlfriend at the time, Linda Cardellini, whom he would worked with on uh, Freaks and Geeks. Um, and he had other breakups that he was dealing with as well that he incorporated into the script, some of which were actually exact replicas of how his breakups occurred. And the Dracula puppet show in this movie is something that he actually tried to get off the ground in real life. And he was looking to get this movie going. And it caught the attention of uh, Judd Apatow while the two were working together on a Knocked Up. And he decided to help him get this movie made with Universal, who signed on as one of the distributors, being that they worked with him in the past on Knocked Up and The 40-Year-Old Virgin. And he added this film to a long list of films that he'd be producing for 2008. Where Nicholas Stoller comes on board was because he had worked with Judd on the short-lived sitcom Undeclared, particular episodes that had Jason Segel in it. And because of their friendship, he offered his hand in directing to which Judd agreed to. And so he agreed and they got to work shooting the film and they finished after a certain amount of time. And the funniest thing that happened is to promote this movie, they actually had people sky right over cities, I hate you Sarah Marshall, which drew questions from friends of those people who really were named Sarah Marshall as they thought they had pissed a loved one off. But the movie opened on April 18, 2008, and despite opening to number two at the box office behind The Forbidden Kingdom with Jackie Chan, it still made over $17 million in its opening weekend, and so far has made over $62 million over its $30 million budget. So it's doing well for itself. We'll see what the final result is later. And the most surprising thing about this movie is that it actually received positive reviews from critics. On Rotten Tomatoes, it has an 83% as critics applauded the film for being funny, having a good heart, and Jason Segel's performance. Richard Roper even said the film shows its worthiness to be a classic. And even the audience themselves were also on the same boat. Even though it's lower, it has a 76%, and on IMDb, it has a 7.1 out of 10. So... Both the audience and critics love this movie. And in my opinion, I think it's deserving of those ratings. And I was wrong to doubt it. And even though the trailer had some funny parts in it and gave me a smile, I thought it was just going to be some chick flicky film. And being that I saw Judd Apatow was involved, I was immediately like, oh, okay, I'll give it a shot, but maybe it won't be to my liking. But I do, uh, seeing that did make me want to see it. Because Judd does have an ability to take like an idea that looks as chick flicky as this and take it and make it in a way where he doesn't relegate it to one specific genre. 
Like, that's the thing about Judd Apatow I really enjoy. Like, for example, the Knocked Up movie. Knocked Up's trailer may make it out like it's some chick flick, but when you really look deeper into it, it's a film that everybody can enjoy. Being that it, being that Judd himself has an ability to make it appeal to both genders. And that is talent that I feel Judd has with his films and pretty much putting his hand in particular films that he's not a part of really and adding his flavor to it much like with Drill Bit Taylor that was one of the things I really enjoyed about Drill Bit Taylor is that it still felt like a Judd Apatow movie and it still felt like it was someone else and it knew how to appeal to both sides like women could still watch it and enjoy it and I think that's the charm of his films because in their marketing they tend to focus a lot more on the raunchy side of his films but when you really watch them they really have a sense of heart along with the raunchiness that keeps them from being mean-spirited from movies like Dirty Love, The New Guy, or A Guy Thing, that they fall into the trap of doing. And as I said, I took my mom to see it the Easter weekend, and because we're Greek, so we have our Easter, and so we pretty much decide, let's see a movie that be at night. And we both loved it. We walked out of there laughing at every line from that film, quoting it. Now she wants me to get the DVD so we can watch it, which is what I was thinking as we were leaving. And I could see why. Because to me, much like Knocked Up, this isn't just some pot-smoking joke-a-thon that um, a lot of comedies in the 2000s... Um, so a lot I love, but there are some that just aren't funny, like Along Came Polly. I know I have a friend that likes that movie, um, but like some jokeathon that really does that really is just a punchline with no build up. Um, but now, granted, you do have some of those jokes in this film. But as I said, it's a movie with a heart and a sweet side that I feel Judd Apatow could give in a lot of his films. But along with Judd, I do feel a lot of the credit also has to go to Jason Siegel, who also wrote this movie and stars in it, and its direction by Nicholas Stoller, who both really add to the film. And I think the film would be nothing without those guys, especially with Judd Apatow. And in order to get into why, let's go over the basics. Now, with the cast in this film, as I said, you got Jason Siegel from Freaks and Geeks, and he's had quick roles in late 90s and early 2000 comedies like Dead Man on Campus, L SLC Punk, and Slackers, and of course, as I said, he writes this film. You have Kristen Bell in this from TV's Veronica Mars. She was in Pulse and was the voice and likeness for Lucy in Assassin's Creed. You have Mila Kunis who was Meg from Family Guy. He, she was on TV's That 70s Show and she's going to be in the Max Payne movie. But you also have Russell Brand in this. He's a newcomer in the movie business. He hasn't been in much. This is like his first real movie. You have Bill Hader from Superbad, Knocked Up, and Hot Rod. You also have small roles for people like Jack McBrayer from TV's 30 Rock, uh, Jonah Hill from Knocked Up and Superbad, Paul Rudd's also in this from, who was also in uh, Knocked Up, um, he was in Halloween 6 and Clueless. You also have Jason Bateman from TV's Arrested Development, Dodgeball, he was also in Hancock, which I saw recently. So you got a very good comedic cast at the disposal. And that pretty much starts with the plot. Because the plot basically is we meet this guy named Peter, played by Jason Siegel, who works as a composer for this show and is dating this woman named Sarah Marshall, played by Kristen Bell, who does this CSI-like show and he believes that, oh, my life is great, I found true love, I'm watching her show, she's helped me through a lot. And despite him being the nicest guy ever to her, she treats him like shit. She shows little interest in his interest, and you later find out that she cheats on him. But he looks at this as, this is what love is. But one day, his world comes crashing down when she shows up at his home and breaks up with him. Putting him in a state of depression, even to the point where he's crying during sex with other women that he ends up with and he ends up like going to the doctor and for like something he had during sex because he can't get over losing his girlfriend so in order to get him over the loss of his br girlfriend his brother 
played by Bill Hader, suggests he go on vacation to get his mind off Sarah in Hawaii. But when he gets there, he discovers that she's also on the same island with her new boyfriend, Aldous Snow, played by Russell Brand, who's this rock star and is also a weirdo, and I'll get into why later. He's a lot of fun, though. Don't take that as, like, I hate the guy, but... He's definitely a weirdo. So basically, he's stuck on the same island with her as he spends some days trying to avoid her, but keeps running into her and her boyfriend who are spending their days trying to enjoy themselves. And he keeps running into them, and he keeps being reminded of all the good times, all the while getting into other crazy shenanigans, and realizing that he can find someone better as he meets this girl named Rachel, played by Mila Kunis, who he hits it off with. And so now he needs to decide whether or not he wants to continue having Sarah on the mind or be with this other girl who clearly likes him for who he is and not trying to turn him into something he isn't, unlike Sarah, who did all those things. Will Peter get over his breakup and find happiness in Rachel, or will he continue to dwell on the past in Sarah? Now, Forgetting Sarah Marshall is one of those movies that I'm actually really surprised by because, as I said, I did not think I was going to like it because with films that look like these chick flicks, I'm not into, and to me, they're gay. Let's be honest. To me, I just feel they're gay. <laughs> not really something I'm into, but um, if you're gay and you like them, that's fine. I'm just being extreme with the jokes, but... I, that aside, I came out of this movie really loving it. I think a lot of credit has to be given to Jason Segel, who I think wrote a fantastic story. And I think this shows his talents as a writer because the story itself has a great setup for a comedy as you have this guy who's basically trying to get over his girlfriend and he decides that he's going to try and hop on a plane to basically get over her and he has a run-in with her and her new boyfriend on the same island and no matter what he does he keeps running into her and for an idea for a movie like that which sounds like a run-of-the-mill sort of romantic comedy it's really smartly written and at times touching and a lot of that has to do with Jason's writing and I think how he incorporates aspects from his personal life and puts them into this film and pretty much sprints it into a setup for a comedic situation, he really makes them work. He knows how to deliver the right amount of wit and charm to these jokes. There's raunch, but it isn't raunchy for the sake of being raunchy and it isn't to the point where it's tasteless and mean-spirited to the point that it doesn't go well with the sweet moments because he knows how to give the movie the emotional weight it needs while also being funny. And... It just really shows his talents as a writer, especially in the moments that are supposed to be heartwarming. And that is a point that especially surprised me, being that I did not expect him to take those moments on. And he does them with care. And you can definitely see he's relating it back to those moments that he felt when his past girlfriends broke up with him. And I think that's what makes the film as endearing and sweet as it is. While I've never been with a girl, I think people can re relate to feeling rejected and can relate to feeling alone and lo losing that loved one. Maybe not to the point that Jason Siegel's acting like, but definitely that sense of the one you loved leaving you. And, but at the same time, uh, it kind of draws the question of was she actually good to him seeing as how, how later on in the film you see she acted like a bitch to him, putting him down, putting down the stuff he liked, berating him, even behind his back, cheating on him. It's fucked up and you, you, like, you can find better, dude. You can literally find better. Yet it adds an interesting layer to the film's story and just him meeting this other girl who shows he's more compatible with it makes for some sweet moments. It definitely shows Jason's talent as a writer. So while the story is a straightforward Judd Apatow idea, it makes up for it with Jason Siegel's writing and how it is written. And I also think it's a well-made film. It's not trying to be an Oscar-nominated film, so it isn't shot like Scorsese. But I think for a first-time director, Nicholas does a great job directing the film. 
Even for a comedy, we get a film shot on location in the beautiful islands of Hawaii. Nicholas does definitely get a lot out of his comedic cast. It's not trying to be anything big. Be this is down to earth. And it has that sort of feel of a down to earth sort of movie. Trying to be... Be... Try to be in the mind of these characters, not making anything big or massive, especially since this is a Judd Apatow movies and his movies are usually shot away where it's down to earth. But there are some nice shots of the film, I gotta say, like towards the end that symbolizes his relationship with Mila Kudis. I like that edit where it looks like a heart towards the end that I thought was sweet. So overall for a Judd Apatow movie, it's shot as you expect for a movie of this magnitude and it goes well with the film that I think it's trying to be. Now, the acting for the film is also very good. Jason Segel, I think, does great as the lead. I thought he gave the character of Peter a good heart. You can tell he wants to be the best boyfriend he can be, and he's trying hard to get his dreams far, like the whole puppet show thing, and basically trying to basically get off the ground and when you see him performing and Sarah's just putting it down and not listening and yes at the same time he does act like a guy like the scene when you see him lying around she brings this up about how you did nothing that whole day you just sat around in nothing but your sweatpants which I think any guy would do on their day off but he does it in a sense of innocence and being a guy He's never mean to anybody, and he's good-hearted. When Sarah breaks up with him, you kind of see him in this pity party. I do love the scene when, basically, he's performing, and he's mad about the whole breakup, and he's in the studio, and he gets mad and starts throwing the chair. That I died at. And he also keeps crying, especially when he's on, when he's having sex, and, like... You feel bad for this guy. You definitely do. Uh, at the same time, you're like, I wouldn't want to be this guy, especially when he's crying in Hawaii. But at the same time, you can't blame him for feeling this way, considering in Hawaii, he keeps running into her no matter what and where he goes. So he keeps being reminded of the good times he has. But he, he goes through the film and basically starts to basically look forward in life and find a girl who actually appreciates him for who he is and doesn't look at his interests as weaknesses, like the puppet show that he wants to do. And basically, I like that. I really like that. I like that side that Jason gives him. I like the innocent side that he gives him and how he plays as this character, even with the crying moments. You kind of get why he would do it. I mean, I've never been in a breakup, so I don't know how it feels. But those moments, also while saddening, I feel his performance also has a good sense of humor and the environment around him really re really is funny for how he reacts to it. Like uh, the part when he's crying on the balcony and Mila calls and he says, there's people complaining about crying going on upstairs. It made that scene even funnier than it needed to be. And, or even the part where he's trying to fit in, he does yoga and he's trying to do a handstand on his head. He's like, I'm doing a handstand, motherfucker! <laughs> Jason Siegel's always a blast. And even in this film, he's really funny. And I definitely think he should do another role like this as opposed to a pot-smoking character. And this film definitely shows what he can do. Especially doing his own singing for the Dracula Puppet Show. So yeah, Jason Siegel, I think, did a fantastic job. Especially with what he contributed to this film. His first girlfriend, I'll say, played by Kristen Bell, is a straight-up bitch. Like the scenes when he, she shows up at his house and breaks up with him. Which is like any girlfriend or boyfriend would go through. Through. And and but basically you find out uh, how much of a bitch she has been to him, and you get the idea that she is a little jealous with Peter and his relationship with Rachel, and tries to spite him, but she can't get to her level. Like the part, like the sex off that they have at night, night, which was also very funny. I'll say though, she played a good bitch, being that she's known for playing the angel character in a lot of her films. I think Kristen Bell did a good, very good job, especially her small sense of tension with Jason Siegel and Rachel, especially when she tries to give him the BJ, even though she knows she has moved on. That's when I was like, fuck you, bitch. 
And I think to the point you just hate her and want to see her get her just desserts, and she does in a way towards the end. I will say the more likable of the two, Mila Kunis, I thought she did a great job. And I'll say she's more attractive in this movie as opposed to Kristen Bell, I'll say that. But I like the fact she's more of a free spirit, like the part at the cliff where she jumps off freely and he jumps in with her even though he's not as good and he's holding on to the friggin' rocks. Or the part when you find out she has a picture of herself topless in the bathroom. Which, by the way, that's not Mila Kunis. It's actually a body double. Even though she has a sense of guilt for that. But Mila, I thought, did a very good job. And I think her and Jason have some very good chemistry with each other. And at times have a cute relationship that gets a sweet ending. And it's definitely a step up from her performance as Meg on Family Guy. So, yeah. Sarah's current boyfriend, played by Russell Brand, I'll say is a riot. A definite riot. I would like to know what drugs Russell was on while ma he was making this, because it must have been some weird-ass drugs. Because he is so goddamn energized in this movie that, yes, while it does come off as weird, and in any other film I would be annoyed by him, but for some reason, with how energized... Rush still plays him and just how sharp the writing is with him it makes him less annoying than he needs to be and yes at times he could be an asshole especially when you find out what he's doing towards the end I won't spoil that being but his moments on screen are just you could tell he's having a ride like the part where he's singing to Sarah and he's singing that sexual song about how he wants to be in her and he's doing thrust and acting like he's humping her and you, you're basically sitting there guiltily laughing because it's so stupid, but yet so damn funny. But for how it is, how it's written, how Russell's energy is, is it's just a, he just is great to look at and just ha laugh at. It, especially the scene when they're at the dinner talking about the movie she was in and they're talking about Pulse or making fun of it. Like, and he's like, why would anybody make a horror movie about a phone killing people? That I died at because Pulse was such a piece of shit. But he's great in the film. Can't wait to see what other comedies he does. Other actors, you got Bill Hader as Peter's brothers, who's the one who convinces him to go on the trip to get over. He's a lot of fun. Has some great banter with him back and forth, especially the part when he tries to delete the com the pictures on the computer. Yes, so we'll have Paul Rudd in this as a stoner surfer who teaches him how to surf. Yeah, Jack McBrayer from 30 Rock is here as this guy's getting married. And even Jonah Hill is this guy's obsessed with Alda Snow. And he has a great scene in the restaurant when he flips out, but he's doing it so quietly because he doesn't want to get fired. So yeah, the casting for the most part is great. There isn't a single person that I can say is bad because each one are perfectly casted and do their parts perfectly. And of course, at the end, you do get uh, the puppet show that Peter was going on and on about. And I gotta say, at the end, even though for a quick second, the puppets look great. The designs on them are very good. I like the fact that they represent Sarah, Peter, and uh, Mila Kunis. I like the look of them, the puppet work. I like that Dracula puppet that they did for it as he's singing. I like the song that he sings. It, and they should look very good, being that this is done by uh, Jim Henson's uh, Creature Shop, the guy who created the Muppets. So they should look good, and they definitely do. And the puppeteering's great. So I gotta give some credit in that area as well. So yeah, overall, this is a great comedy. And coming out of this movie, I honestly had nothing to point my finger at and say that was wrong. I honestly had no problems watching it. And I feel to dig deep and find problems is unfair because I feel the movie itself offers up a lot. I feel it has a good heart. It's funny. It'll even make you forget your own breakup if you went through that one. So yeah, this is a really great movie. It's a funny movie. It's a good hearted film. And it definitely shows that Judd Apatow still has it. So yes, I highly recommend you make it a mission to see Forgetting Sarah Marshall. It is a great time at the movies. So when it comes down to it, I give Forgetting Sarah Marshall a 10 out of 10. And it deserves it. It therefore gets the Alexandra Seal of Approval. Definitely a great movie. So yeah, definitely give this movie a watch. If you like Judd Apatow, you like his other films like Super Bad, all those movies, you're gonna love this one. It's funny, it's heartwarming, it's good. 
It has a good heart in its place. And it's just, it shows the talents of Jason Segel. So, yeah, definitely check this out. But that's my review for Forgetting Sarah Marshall. And next time I'm going to do a review on Iron Man. Going to try and get that out along with my review for uh, Turok. I'm going to try and get those out in the same week because I really want to get these done with because I'm going to be going away. Um, I'm actually going on a trip itself, so I'm going to get some reviews written up and I'll film them all when I get back. But that's what's to come. I'm also going to do a review on... Um, Harold and Kumar Escape from Guantanamo Bay, The Strangers, all those films. So be on the lookout for those. But right now, if you guys have seen Forgetting Sarah Marshall, let me know in the comments below what you guys think of it. I would love to know your thoughts on it. And what is your favorite Judd Apatow movie? And with that said, I'll see you guys later. Let me know all that stuff in the comments below. Be sure to rate, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you guys next time on the wonderful world of YouTube. Bye.